everyone, this is Erin Peliquin for MCP Actions. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use and install our Baby Sets presets for Lightroom. Baby Steps is based on our popular newborn necessities actions for Photoshop and Elements. We've combined some of the more popular looks or the spirits of the looks with the speed and efficiency of editing in Lightroom. We're going to begin today's video by actually installing the presets. So after you purchase them via our website, you will download them onto your computer, either via a link that you will be directed to after your purchase on the website, or via a link that you've received on email. After downloading the presets onto your computer, you'll want to save them in a location that you back up normally so that you don't lose the presets and can easily reinstall them if you change computers or upgrade your Lightroom. Now when I download products, they go into my downloads folder and anything that you get from MCP is going to be in a zipped file like this. So you can see that it ends in the letter ZIP and it has a zipper in the icon you can unzip or extract the product by either double clicking or by right clicking on most systems. And once you have extracted the product, you'll see a master baby steps folder with seven folders inside. The local adjustments is going to be installed separately from the other six develop preset folders. So once you have downloaded and extracted your product, you're going to go into Lightroom and you're going to locate the Preferences menu item. If you're on a PC, you'll find Preferences on your Edit menu. If you're on a Mac, you'll find Preferences right here on your Lightroom menu. You want to activate the Presets tab of the Preferences menu item and click on Show Lightroom Presets folder. When you click on that, another window of your either Finder or Explorer will open, and you can see that the Lightroom folder is selected. We're going to begin by clicking on the Develop Presets within Lightroom. This is where we are going to install our Develop Presets here, so the ones that begin with Baby Steps 01 through 06. So in order to select them all, I'm going to click on the first one, hold down the shift button and click on the last one. I'm going to right click to select copy. You could also go to the edit menu and select copy from there. I'm going to return to the develop presets folder, right click and select paste items. And you could also select paste from the edit menu. So now I've installed the develop presets and I only need to install the local presets now. So within the same Lightroom folder, I'm going to click on Local Adjustment Presets, going to go back to my download and open the Local Adjustments folder. Now when we're installing the Develop Presets, we want to copy and paste the folders themselves. However, for the Local Adjustments, we don't want the entire folder, we just want the individual presets inside. So I'm going to type Command or Control A to select all the presets and then I'm going to right click to copy, go to my local adjustments folder and right click to paste. And so that's it, the presets have been installed, I just need to restart Lightroom in order to bring them in. So I'm going to pause this video while I restart Lightroom. Okay, now that Lightroom has reopened, I'll show you where to access the presets. So in this presets panel, you can see your new folders. MCP Baby Steps 1 through 6. To access the local presets, you will use the local adjustment brush here to begin with. And from your drop down menu, you can see all 30 presets that begin with MCP Baby. Those are the local adjustment presets. So I'm going to go to this unedited photo by Jess Rottenberg to show you how to use the presets efficiently. Um, this is an adorable photo and it's just going to take a few clicks for us to perfect it. So I'm going to start with the Baby Steps 01 Exposure and White Balance folder. This is an underexposed photo. Um, hovering over each preset, I can see in the Navigator panel a preview of what the photo will look like as I select each one. 
So I'm going to click on Fix Underexposure 2. And then scrolling down to the white section, I think that auto is going to give me the best results. Definitely. So I'm going to click on the auto white balance. Now moving to folder two, this is my workflow that gives me the all over look and feel. So you can hover over each preset or you can actually click on them by going down the list. So within the number two workflow folder, as well as the number one exposure and white balance folder, you will only apply the last preset that you have clicked on. So if I were to click on sugar and spice haze and then sugar and spice pop, sugar and spice pop would completely replace haze. It does not combine the two presets. I could also play with twinkle twinkle to add a yellow look or maybe this little piggy to add some pink to the image. Um, but I believe that my favorite one is going to be the pick me up pop for this photo. I like the contrast and the color that it adds. Now I'm going to go down to folder number three, which is our skin color corrections. In this folder, we have dusting of baby powder, which is going to even out the skin tone. We've also got color correctors, so you might need to tone down the reds or the yellows or the gray. And each of these has three settings to choose from. So baby powder, light, medium, and strong. Hush the reds, light, medium, and strong. And then you can combine each color fix with the baby powder. So hush the reds with baby powder light. And I think that's what this photo needed. So the, the skin is more even and the reds are less harsh right now. So again, in this folder number three, you can only apply one preset. So the one that you clicked on most recently will be the one that's reflected on your photo. Moving to the workflow helpers, in this folder, you can select one preset from each section. So one of the bright and mid-tones, one of the dark and mid-tones, etc. So one of the mid-tones changers, one of the highlights changers, um, as well as one contrast, one sharpening, one saturation, etc. So I am going to add just a little bit of contrast to this photo using contrast light. And then I am going to sharpen it lightly as well. Now I'm going to move to our local adjustment brush and with it I'm going to enhance her eyelashes and her cheeks and lips just a little bit. So turning on the brush I'm going to start by selecting sharp eyelashes, going to zoom in to her eyes. I'm going to make my brush very small by clicking on the right facing square bracket key. Now this looks harsh, but we are zoomed in, so I'm going to paint on both eyes. I'm going to hold down my space bar so that I can click and drag within the photo. And then I am going to paint the eyelash adjustment over her other eye. And now zooming out, it does still look too strong, so I, I didn't want to confirm that until I had zoomed out. To adjust it here, it's very easy if you are in the collapsed view of the adjustment brush. I can expand it by clicking on the triangle on the right side of the adjustment brush name. Um, if I wanted to adjust the individual sliders, or I can collapse the brush and adjust all of the sliders together. So I'm just going to turn this down a little bit until that eyelash looks more natural. And now I'm going to click on the new brush so that I can edit a different area. I'm going to select the blushing cheeks. I'm going to click once on each cheek just to add a little bit of pink there. Now I am going to click on the new button and I'm going to go from brushing, blushing cheeks to blushing lips. I'm going to make my brush a bit smaller and then brush right over her lips. Now I think that's maybe pinker than I like for this photo, so again I'll use this slider to reduce the pinkness just a little bit. And so for this image, let me show you an overall before and after. We've gone from here to here. Now for this next photo from Kim Silverstein, the white balance and exposure is pretty good to begin with. So I can move right over Baby Steps 01 into my workflow. 
And for this one, I like the sugar and spice pop. This is very subtle, evens out the colors a little bit and adds just a very soft baby-like pop. Now, one thing I do notice is that the highlights in his face are pretty bright. So I am going to skip down to section four and I'm going to click on quiet the highlights strong. That adds a little darkness back into his face. From here, I think that his skin could look more vibrant. So I am going to use Hush the Grays and I am going to add baby powder as well. So you can see that that adds a little bit of natural color back into his face. And then I'll return to folder number four to add some contrast as well as some sharpening. I'm going to use sharpen medium here because we're not zoomed in quite so much on his skin. Now the next thing I'm going to do with this image is blur out some of the wrinkles on the blanket. So in order to do that, I am going to go back to my local adjustment brush, which is already activated, and I'm going to select it's a blur. I'm gonna make my brush much larger, and I'm going to start painting in. And you can see as I paint that the blanket smooths out. Some of the wrinkles just disappear altogether. I'm going to type the letter O to show me a red overlay over where I've painted. And I'm going to confirm that auto mask is on. Auto mask will make sure that I don't paint over into the blue blanket or the baby's head with this blur. You can see that I did paint over a little bit in the head, so I will fix that in just a moment. Um, by holding down Alter Option, you go into the Erase Mode, and you can just erase any place where you've painted mistakenly. Now you can see the Auto Mask actually worked a bit too well. It didn't pick up all of the blanket, all of the deepest wrinkles, so I'm going to turn that off, make my brush a little bit smaller, and go pick up the spots that I missed before. And I'll do the same over here. So I'm going to type the letter O to turn off that red overlay. I am going to toggle the adjustment off and on. So there's a before, there's an after. I noticed that I missed a spot right here. It's looking much better, but we can make it even better by adding a second coat of paint over the deepest wrinkles. So I'm going to click on the new button and I am going to add additional blur to the most serious wrinkles. Make that brush a little bit bigger so I can paint more quickly. And then continue minimizing the wrinkles in this blanket. Now I'm going to do one last edit to this photo. We could of course paint in pink to his cheeks and lips if we wanted to. Um, I am going to pop the color of the blanket just to emphasize this blue a little bit. Now that's a bit bluer than I'd like, so I'm going to turn down the intensity to something right about there. So just popping that color a little bit. Now looking at his face, you can see that there's a bit of a spot on his nose with some red that I want to remove. So by adding a new brush, I'm going to go to In My Dreams Color Changer. And the great thing about In My Dreams is that you can actually replace one color with another. In order to use it, you need to expand your adjustment brush settings and scroll down to this color box. Clicking on the color box, you'll see the color picker. And when you have this eyedropper displayed, you can click and then drag to an area of skin whose color you like. And so I've just selected for painting this baby's skin tone. I'm going to reduce the saturation to about 10 or somewhere less than 10 because otherwise it will be too strong. I am going to make my brush smaller and then I'm just going to paint lightly over this red area of his nose. And you can see that by doing that, and I can also do this over his eyelids, this is going to minimize the um, tonal variations in the color. So let's do a before. There's a before and there's an after. So on this image, we have gone from this edit state or this unedited state to here. We've really cleaned up the blanket and the skin nicely. For the last edit, I'm going to go to this photo and show you how to remove flakiness from baby skin. 
going to start with the Pick Me Up Crisp Color Pop. And so that alone makes a great change to this raw photo. I'm going to go down to Hush the Reds with Baby Powder Light to tone down some of the red in that skin and even out the skin tone. And I am going to darken my highlights just a little bit. Now I haven't showed you yet the Blankets of Haze, so I want to show you Section 5 Blankets of Haze. If you want to add a soft color tint to your image, you can do that by clicking on the color of the haze that you'd like, whether it's lavender or blue. These are very subtle, so there's a stronger blue. So these can change the mood and the feel of your photo altogether. For any section of our presets, you'll see that the last preset is a reset, which undoes any of the presets in that folder. Section 6 you can use if you like a specific combination of presets. So for instance, if you find that you constantly run the Pick It Up Color Pop along with the Hush the Reds, you can apply those presets and then you can create a save of formula here. So it's like a shortcut to your favorite combination of presets. In order to make those work, after applying the presets, you would simply right click on Save a Formula and select update with current settings. And so you can select all here or you can memorize only certain parts of the preset. So for instance, noise reduction and white balance and exposure um, usually aren't common from photo to photo so you could uncheck those. And then with the Save a Formula updated, you can apply it to any other photo you'd like. You can also right click and select rename if you want to rename this preset to something that will remind you what it's made up of. Now moving back to the local adjustment brush to clean up baby skin here. I am going to select our baby cream which is our strongest local softening. And I am going to make my brush a little bit larger and just paint right over this flaky area of his skin. Now that's done a pretty good job, but there still are some flakes left, so I'm going to add a second coat of paint with my new button, and I am going to paint on an even stronger blur. So let's look at a before and after here. There's a before, and there's an after. There are a couple of spots in the back that are still showing. So for those, I would just grab the spot removal tool, and then I would click on each little spot and adjust what area replaces the spot with until I get a good match. So something like that. So for the flaky skin on his arm, we have gone from here to here in just a few clicks. Now the last thing that I want to show you is on the vignette local presets that we've given you, how to use the radial tool. So if you have versions of Lightroom beginning with Lightroom 5, you do have access to this radial filter. And you can see that we have got some presets that say, you know what, these are better if you use them with the radial filter. So you simply click and drag out an oval in the shape that you want it to be and the size. You can adjust it by clicking and dragging on the sizing boxes to suit your photo. And you can drag around this oval as well so that it suits your photo the best. So this is a super simple way to get a very customized vignette in Lightroom. Now I just want to point out before we conclude that I've edited all newborn photos in this video, but these presets are great for editing portraits in general. You've got the skin tone correctors as well as the various eye brightening and sharpening presets and cheeks and lips here. So these are great for portraits and many other types of photography as well. Thanks so much for watching and enjoy your presets.